Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome now to the fourth week of our Lenten message series, Seriously, God? Making sense of when life doesn't make sense. If there was any series that better fit into the time we're living in, you know, it's this one today because we're all experiencing this disconnect and where we cry out sometime, seriously, God? But well, we've been looking at various issues that can be roadblocks in our relationship with God, various problems that can be difficult for us in our faith journey, in our spiritual life, and growing in an intimate relationship with Him. You know, if we ignore these issues, if we just avoid them, then God may be distant from us, and we may just stay in that spot of lacking understanding, but if we lean into these various issues that we've been talking about, those gaps can actually be an opportunity for us to grow. Those gaps between our lack of understanding and where God is can actually be a spark for us to grow in a relationship with Him. Our faith can be a faith that seeks understanding. And this is both with the ideas we're talking about, but also personally, up close and personal. So a few weeks ago, we talked about when God says no. God does say no to us. Jesus teaches us. But as we saw, those no's are usually for our own freedom. Jesus taught us that when God says no, it is so that we be free from sin, free from the slavery that comes with sin, like slavery to our own passions, our own bodily needs, or slavery to compromise with evil, or slavery to giving in to the crowd to try to just please others, we sometimes tend to do. Christ wants us to be free, and that's why he might say no to us sometime. And last week, we looked at the issue of when God seems to be sleeping, you know, when God seems to have abandoned us, he didn't deliver on his promises. We said that this could be an opportunity to grow in faith and trust, like Abraham. And instead of crying out in the moment, why? Or why me? You know, as we sometimes might do, instead, ask what? What, God, are you doing? What are you teaching me? And perhaps that question is about learning to grow in trust and patience and perseverance in faith that will set us up for more wonderful things in the course of our life. So today, we're looking at another aspect of when we might cry out, seriously, God? And that's when the, we look at the people in charge. <laughs> so it, this is anyone and everyone who is a bad leader. You might say, seriously, God, you made that guy president? Or you made Putin the leader of Russia, and look what he's doing. Seriously, God, what are you doing? This indirectly and directly can be a challenge to our faith because it just dis leaves us disillusioned, doesn't it? When we look at the leaders that God seems to have left and allowed to be in charge. And it's not just on a grand scale, on a global scale, it's also personal. You know, it's that coach who always plays their kid in the kid's sports league, even though the kid is terrible and your kid is always on the bench. Or it's the principal or the teacher who should have retired years ago, sadly. is just making everyone else in the school miserable. Or it's, it's that boss or that manager who just seems to be on a power trip and keeps getting ahead, and getting promoted, and you wonder when things are going to catch up with them. You know, and you, you just question, why, God, is this happening? Or it could be the leader of your homeowners association who's just causing so much havoc and, and you just get so angry and aggravated. Well, it's not just the, those things, but it's also, sadly, in leadership in the church. Well, just a little story for myself is something that's personal. So as a seminarian, I spent two summers in, a, in an internship at a great parish with a great young priest who I really looked up to. I saw him as a mentor. And I learned so much from his, his leadership. I learned so much from just the, how successful the parish was. And, and uh, I, I had such a great experience those two summers that I asked this priest to preach at my first Mass. And, you know, that's something that 
as a seminarian, we ponder, you know, who's going to offer the, the preaching, the message at your very first Mass of Thanksgiving. And so he did. And then several years later, very sadly, he got in trouble. He was actually arrested for something he did years and years before. And I was just so angry. He ended up uh, being laicized. He's no longer a priest, but he, the charges were dropped later on. But I never actually talked to him. That happened several years ago. I, was, I just have been so angry. And you wonder, just how can God allow people, even in the church, to be in charge? You know, and, and you, you can cry out. And this is a major crisis of faith for so many people out there. There's a great quote from, uh, from the time of Napoleon, 200 years ago. You know, Napoleon was the emperor of France who conquered most of Europe during the early 1800s. And he had this great war of conquest. He actually captured the Pope at the time. And Napoleon famously said to the Pope, I will destroy your church. You know what the Pope said? He said, well, we clergy have been trying to destroy it for 1,800 years. So good luck with that. But my friends, this is a major issue of faith and trust. Why, God, do you allow those people in charge? It turns out that throughout the Bible, we see examples of bad leaders. You, can't, you can go one page to the next all throughout the Word of God and find out what God thinks of bad leadership. There's no place that better illustrates where God's heart is than the book of Exodus. And that's actually my favorite book in the Old Testament, the story of God's deliverance of His chosen people from slavery underneath the corrupt Pharaoh to freedom. And we see the call of leadership and the figure of Moses. Again, my favorite figure in the Old Testament. Now just a little background about Moses. You may have seen films about him. You know, the old Ten Commandments film with Charlton Heston. Or maybe you saw the cartoon, The Prince of Egypt. Very good. It's a very excellent film. And it tells the story of the, the birth of Moses at the time when the Hebrews, the people of Israel, were growing numerous. And the Pharaoh decided that this was a threat, so he was going to murder the firstborn of the children of Israel. Throw them into the, into the Nile River. You know the word Moses, you know what it means? It means drawn out of the river, drawn out of the water. That's what the, the name Moses actually means. So Moses was born, his mother protected him, and then she put him in a little boat in the Nile River, hoping desperately that he would be saved. And he was rescued by the daughter of the Pharaoh and raised in the court of the Pharaoh himself. He became a prince of Egypt. And then in the course of his life, one time, he saw a Hebrew slave being mistreated by a foreman, an, an, an Egyptian worker who was mistreating this slave. And he was so enraged, he was so angry that he lashed out and murdered this foreman. And for that, he was a criminal, so he had to flee Egypt. He went out into the desert to a place called Midian, and there he encountered a man named Jethro. He married Jethro's daughter, and he settled there as a young man, as a married shepherd, working under Jethro. And that, that's where he was. That was his life. And that's where we pick up in Exodus chapter 3. We hear this. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. This was something out of the ordinary, right? So what was not out of the ordinary was that the bush was on fire. It was the desert, it's a very dry place, and occasionally the bushes would be on fire. But what was unusual was that it was not consumed, that it was not burnt up by the fire. You know, that's how God often works in our life, if you think about it. There will be a sign that's out of the ordinary, something that will get our attention. And we have the choice to make whether we're going to keep on just going through the busyness of our life, or we're going to pause and check out what that unusual sign is. Well, that's what Moses did. The story continues. So Moses decided, 
I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. So Moses takes that initiative. And my friend, just as he did, we have to pause on a regular basis in the course of our life to see the signs of God, to let God speak to us. So then God goes on and he says this. God said, come no near. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he is a, was afraid to look at God. Remember, Moses at this point did not know God. God said, this is holy ground. You are approaching. I am the God of your father. He introduces himself, but Moses hides himself. Moses is afraid. You know, often when we renew our spiritual life or we begin our spiritual life, as our catechumens are here today, we're afraid. We're afraid of what others might think. We're afraid because we think God will strike us down for some reason for our past guilt and sin. We might be afraid, and that's not a bad thing. But God wants us to move beyond that. If you read the whole book of Exodus, you'll find out that God and Moses become friends. Moses moves beyond that fear to an intimacy with God. And if you're in a place of fear, that's okay. But please know, you can move beyond that too. So Moses here is hiding, but God keeps on talking. God says this. But the Lord said, I witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave driver. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Well, this is the heart of the matter, what God has to say today about bad leadership. We may be tempted to think that God ignores it or it just is tuned out when there are bad leaders. God sees it. God hears the cry of the oppressed. He notices the oppression of Pharaoh. He knows what is going on, and he has a plan. He has a plan to bring them out of their pain, out of their sorrow, out of their suffering, to a spacious land, a land of abundance, a land of freedom. And it's the same thing for you and I, my friends. I said a few weeks ago, don't confuse uh, God's will with, with what's going on in the world. In other words, not everything is God's will. Not everything is God's will. If you are in a place of slavery right now, know that that's not God's will. God wants you too, just like the people of Israel, to be led out of slavery, to be led to abundance. And there's even more here, my friends. So God has a plan. And so often, like we saw last week with Abraham, God calls human beings to partner with him. God desires, he can, God can do whatever he wants, but God desires to work with human beings who he calls forth to partner with him. And so God, ha, God has even more news for, Abraham, for Moses today. Here's what he says. He commands him, now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Well, then, if you read the rest of this chapter, 3 and 4, you can read it on your own. There's this great and interesting dialogue, a back and forth between God and Moses. And we can totally relate to this dialogue. If you go through it, first Moses says, God, I'm a nobody. I'm just a shepherd out in the desert. And God says, I will be with you. I will be with you by the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire. I will guide you every step of the way before Pharaoh and all his servants. And then Moses goes back to God. He says, God, I don't know you. I just met you. Then God says, I am who am. God reveals his very name 
to Moses. He said, I have chosen you, and to you alone have I shared my name. And then Moses says, God, when I go before Pharaoh, nobody's going to believe me. Nobody's going to believe me at all. They'll think I'm crazy. And God says, I will work with you and through you with signs and wonders to show my might and power. And he gives Moses that rod that will turn into a snake. So God will give that sign, the first of many other signs of his power and might over Pharaoh and Pharaoh's power. And then Moses says, God, come on, I'm not competent. I'm not, I'm not up to this task. I'm not any good at what you're asking me for. I'm not even a good speaker. And God says, you're not be alone. I will provide for you co-workers, other people like Aaron who will be at your side. They will work with you in this task I'm giving you. You know what finally Moses then says? He says, God, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. And that's when God gets angry. <laughs> and so motivated by God's anger, Moses goes and does it. He goes and does what God commands him to do. And in the course of the whole rest of the story, we see this man Moses, God's chosen instrument, grow into an incredible leader. An incredible leader who will lead God's people from slavery to freedom. If you ever want to study good leadership, I suggest read the book of Exodus. Learn about Moses because there is a model example of an amazing leader. Oh, today I just want to give a couple takeaways for this message. You know, if you're in one of our amazing small groups that, have, that are going on during Lent, you're going to read chapter 3 of the book. And uh, if you don't know about our small groups, we have well over 100 people in them, and they've just brought such a spiritual excitement to our parish. Uh, I've seen so much joy come out of those discussions each and every week. Well, the first takeaway is this. Know that if you are a victim of any kind of abuse of authority, if you've ever experienced bad leadership in your life in past and present, God hears your pain. God sees that bad leadership. And in God's appointment, God's time, he'll do something about it. So lean into God. Bring your pain to him. Cry out like the people of Israel in slavery did. Don't be afraid to speak your heart to him. And maybe in God's time and, and in your calling, he's leading you out of that bad leadership. Whether that's in a household, in a relationship, or whether that's in a poor job that you're called to move on from, God wants you to be out of Egypt and into freedom. And second, maybe God is calling you to be a leader. Maybe God is calling you, like Moses, to step up. You know, one of the reasons why there are bad leaders in this world, not the only reason, but one of the important reasons is that good people, good people don't step up. They are humble in a kind of false way. They think maybe like Moses, I'm not good enough. I'm not qualified. And guess what? You're not. <laughs> because God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the call. God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifi qualifies the call. Somebody just told me today, in life, you can either be a caboose or an engine. So be an engine. <laughs> Lead others. And even if that means facing opposition, which you will as a leader, step up. Make the world a better place. Be the good. Be the change in this world in whatever position that may be. And third, if you are a leader, which many of you are, if you are a leader, be like Moses. Lean into God. Go back and forth with God because I know as a leader, I can't do this without God. I will crash and fail if I don't lean into God every single day. You'll only be the best leader, whether you're head of a household or head of a classroom or a manager or a coach or whatever. You'll only be the best leader when you have God on your side. And I've known, you know, speaking about my anger in that situation I was speaking of, God has taught me in prayer that that can be effective. I can use that actually to be effective more and more as a leader. That's something God is teaching me uh, more and more each and every day. So my friends, bring that to prayer this week. Bring that to prayer that perhaps God will bring healing, perhaps God will bring you courage to step up in some way. And the bottom line of this series is that there are many times in life 
where things don't make sense, right? Many, many times in the course of our life where things just don't make sense. But they are all opportunities, those times, those seasons. They're opportunities to lean into God. We can have a faith that seeks understanding. A faith that seeks understanding. And if we keep on seeking God, eventually we're going to find Him. Amen.